Hi, and to welcome to today's class, which is, of course, Artistic Simple Cut Workshop. And it's with me, Trevor Conkergood from Sunset Stitches. And let me say I'm super excited for today's class because, of course, this is our first class in a new series that I've started specifically for artistic simple cut users and featuring the amazing artistic edge digital cutting machine. Um, I suppose if you didn't have the edge cutting machine, uh, this class would still be valuable provided you have the artistic simple cut software because that is going to be uh, the main software that we're going to be learning about and using and I of course have a beautiful 15 inch edge cutting machine here all Wi-Fi and ready to go as well as I have an um, cameo silhouette that I've used for the past several years and love it as well but uh, yeah the edge is just awesome so anyhow Welcome to our new class, and I hope you enjoy today's class. Now, today's class, a couple of bits of news. So the first thing is, um, today's class is, of course, the first class, and so we're going to be focusing on information that we're going to need to know to be able to enjoy these classes, and we're going to focus in on learning some basics of the software. And I want to, um, I guess, announce an additional class. So I just thought that it would be really valuable if I could do a good quick start class today and record this class kind of void of any real projects. And we're just going to focus in on some of the things we need to know to be able to enjoy the rest of the classes. And so um, what I've done is added another date to our class list. So I'll just put it on at the end. But if you visit my website, which of course is sunsetstitches.com, and click on the page for the Artistic Simple Cut and Edge Workshop, you will find um, all of the class dates and all of the information about the classes. And if you're not already a member, because I'll probably share this class with some people um, that aren't already members of this class, and this is where you'll go to join if you want to. Um, of course, stores are welcome to join, so you can join with through and with your local store or club. Anyhow, anybody who wants to know more about joining can give me an email and I'll be happy to help you, which is trevor at sunsetstitches.com. But anyhow, I'll visit this page. But here's the new dates. Um, so I've in, so today's the date is our first class and we'll be going until the end of May now. So the DVD will get shipped to everybody who joins, you know, whenever you join um, and through whoever, what store you join or directly with me, I'll ship them all. It's going to now be in June by the time I get those discs out. So that's what's going to happen now. So yeah, um, obviously you can attend these classes live, which everybody is. And if you attend live, then there is a questions box on the GoToWebinar control panel. And I just popped open my questions box and I see Marianne saying, hi, Trevor. And so thanks, Marianne. Hi to you too. And yeah, if you're attending live then and want to communicate with me during the class, please use the questions box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, Donna says, I can see your screen, but don't have any audio. Well, it's going to be hard for me to answer Donna because I don't have anybody today acting as a class organizer. Generally speaking, if you don't have any audio, it's probably because um, your internet connection may not be fast enough. You know, I'll try and communicate with Donna. Uh, hopefully she works for her. If you ever, you know, are having trouble in, during a live class, it's always possible to leave the class and join again if you think that might help. And if you're sharing your internet with anybody in the house, i.e. you're on a wireless network and, you know, your kids are in the other room watching YouTube videos, <laughs> uh, they're also sharing the internet bandwidth. And if you're finding you don't have enough to kind of get a good stream on my class, then go see if you can shake them off the internet. Outside of that, of course, I'm recording the class. And so attending class live is optional. Um, I will be able to um, 
send you guys all a copy of the download. So all the members of the class will download the recorded classes and enjoy them on your own time. And I always get a good recording here. So if you are having any trouble with the live class, don't sweat it. Just wait for the recording. But usually, and I mean 99% of the time, I don't have any trouble. So, um, And I'm sorry I don't have a class organizer here today to type to Donna. Um, but I'll come back to that. I'm sorry, Donna, if I left you hanging, but I need to move on. I got lots to talk about today. So yeah, questions live is fine. But to be honest, the point of the live classes is not to ask questions per se. It's if you have questions about the topics that I'm showing, then that's an appropriate time and you know to ask the question. Otherwise, I always invite questions. In fact, I love to get email from members with questions, comments, feedback, uh, suggestions for new topics for class. Um, and I always ask people just to simply email me at trevor at sunsetstitches.com. So once you've attended the class live or not, once you're a member and I've recorded a class, you're going to be sent an email with an invitation to download it. And I use a service called Hightail. So you'll get the email, my little Hightail email, and it'll have a link on it. And it'll take you to, and I'll just show you what it looks like, a download page. Okay, and here you don't need to join Hightail. If you click save, then that'll ask you to become or log into your Hightail account. But if you choose download, it will allow you to simply save a copy of this class, which notice this is a previous class from my artistic workshop number six series. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute, but it's a zip file. And so that's what I send out as a zip file. And you click on download and it will start the download. Now, um, during the live class, I won't bother to download one, but I did just download one prior to class and it, I downloaded this one and it took me 32 seconds. So if you have good internet speed, they don't take that long. But this is a file that, see, it says here it's 174 megabytes. So depending on your internet speed, it might take five minutes. Or longer if you have very slow internet which would also be problematic if you're trying to attend the live classes well it could take I've heard people tell me it takes them an hour to download but to be honest for me it takes 30 seconds and I have average to high speed you know internet uh, once you've downloaded it then you're going to find that in your downloads folder and if I just look at my recently you know when I finished downloading it, it came up with a little width thing along the bottom of the window saying, do you want to open it or view the downloads? But I can always go back to my downloads folder, you know, to see my past downloads just by, I'll just do that again. Here on, I'm using um, Internet Explorer with Windows 10, so it might be different for you, but I'm just looking at the folder on my computer called downloads. So this little button here brings it up, downloads. And I can simply click on the thing that I downloaded, the zip file, and it opens up a browser window. I like an intern. Um, this this file folder here is called Windows Explorer, and this is a Windows Explorer window, and it's showing us the contents of that class. So notice that that class had a a WMF video. That's the that's the bulk of the video of the data is the video. See. And then there was a PDF class review. So this is something that you would print out and it'll help you if you print all of my classes, put them in a binder, it'll help you to review what you've learned for, you know, and understand the contents of the class. Uh, and then there'll be any draw files or any artwork files that may be in that class. But notice right now, and I'm just gonna travel up a folder to, this is my downloads folder. And what I can see is that AW06-5E is a .zip zip file, and I need to extract it. That is the key word here. If I don't click on it and use this button to say extract, it'll always be inside of the little zipper, you know, think of it like a Ziploc baggie, and I've put all my little goodies in it, and you got to take the stuff out of the Ziploc bag before you can enjoy it. So you unzip and it's extract is what you need to say. And here, well, if I open it, select everything and say extract, it'll allow me to choose where. So here's the folder that it's in. You could put it on your desktop. You could choose to a different location by clicking on this to expand the options. Okay, but if I just want to put it in the folder, you know, that I've got on my desktop for this class, I just did that. Okay, so I simply 
clicked extract, clicked on where to extract to, and then it extracted it. Now, if I browse, so I think they put that on my desktop in this folder here. Um, where did I extract it to? So you got to pay attention, Trevor. Oh, here, right on my desktop. One to six. Well, here's number six. That's the one that I extracted. No, that's not true. Let's look back. <laughs> uh, let's try again. So I'm going to go on to the, I have everything in here selected, and I'm going to say extract. Okay, so let's put it on the desktop, because that's a pretty easy place for me to find. <laughs> so everything that I just selected is now extracting to my desktop. And so if we look at the desktop, there will be a folder here where's my folder this is supposed to be helpful for you guys huh. I don't mean to be dumb I'll pop up my questions box because maybe somebody's trying to help me right now Donna has left. I'm sorry, Donna. I'll email her and talk to her about what could have been wrong. But generally speaking, when you connect, it's good. Um, so I downloaded the file and unopened it. And I have it here. Downloads, right? And I want to extract it. And I choose extract. I'm going to choose extract all instead of selecting them manually. See if that helps me any. Huh. Now I got a where do you want to put it? This is better. But I'm still going to hit browse and put it on my desktop because I want the folder. So I'm just going to select my desktop and say extract. This looks better. Yeah. So now if we look on my desktop, so let's just click on desktop. We've got a folder. Oh, all the files have been extracted not into a folder. So they're it just put extracted the files. So what I do, all right, I'm doing a batch up job of this. I like to make a folder, new folder, and I'd like you to make a folder and call it Artistic Simple Cut Workshop 01. And then inside of there, I'd like you to make another folder. So I'll just click new folder again. So I'm just using Windows Explorer to set myself up with a folder for class number one. And then when you get my download, this is where I want you to put the stuff. Because if you see what I've got here, this is my, so there's several versions of artistic software. And I've recorded a few series of classes, six of them, right here, AW01-06, to my artistic workshop. Should have called it artistic suite workshop, but... This one's the Artistic Simple Cut Workshop, specifically for Simple Cut, but this was the Artistic Workshop for people using Artistic Suite. And I've got six sets. So here's set one, and if I look inside there, there is the classes. Class one, two, three, four, five, six, and et cetera. And when you look in each class, then you'll find the video and the PDF and the, any other files that went along with that class. And that's kind of what you can expect from this class, okay? So sorry to me. And by the way, I normally use Windows. I have WinZip, which instead of using Windows Explorer, I was trying to show you how to do it using Windows Explorer because I know everybody has that. I use WinZip, which is a program which can be used to open up uh, zip files on your computer and actually I don't even have it on my Windows 10 computer when I work on my laptop I use WinZip so that's why I was more less familiar with doing it here anyhow it should work and I think all versions of Windows from version Windows 7 and on should be able to unzip those files when I send them out so before today's class is over, we're going to take a visit to the Artistic Creative Products website, and I'm going to just point out a few things that I think are important. So part of what I want to do today is help you be ready to enjoy my classes. So I'm going to point you in the, in the direction of a few things. Make sure you're aware of some of the things that I found helpful when I was learning. So the Artistic Creative Products website, we'll also talk about the genomespecials.com website where um, you can download a copy of the user's guide and I'll just 
maybe highlight a few points in the user's guard guide that I think are very important about getting set up, especially with the edge cutter and the Wi-Fi. Um, I just love this girl, Maddie Bushman, who is an educator for Genome America, is a real genius with the edge cutter and I've had so much inspiration and opportunities to learn from Maddie. And when we were at Genome Institute this past summer, uh, Maddie and I made a little video. And so you'll probably want to check that out. It's kind of funny. It's just about a minute long. And we were just saying how much we love the Edge and all the products. And um, yeah, so in ter and then so that's the next thing. Oh, look at this. She made this for me. This is using one of the tools that Genomi sells for the edge cutter. And so one of the questions you probably have is what, you know, what products will I be using? And I want to try and keep it fairly generic. So anybody who's got the software and the cutting machine should be good to go. What I have for tools are the ones that Genomi's offered in their starter kits. And so if you haven't seen, they have some um, additional, I guess, tools that you can use in the machine and so there are I got I guess I picked up five of them Genomi was so nice to provide me with these with these samples and I have to say how appreciative I am to Genomi for the uh, support that they have given me for many years now and I love teaching their software and their products and so they gave me an etching tool pen holder grinding tool punching tool creasing tool and several starter kits now if you don't have these things don't panic Christmas is coming just let your friends and family know what's on your list but the the starter kits you may have a lot of these tools if you've been doing any of this paper crafting and fabric crafting already um, there's a good chance you've got a lot of the things but the starter kits are nice because they do kind of give you a little bit of everything you need to get going um, so beyond the starter kits, I'm sure I'll use some products. And so we'll learn of other products as time goes on. But these starter kits were quite helpful. So there's this is the fabric starter kit. And it comes with some Terio Magic, some nice applique cutting scissors, and some different, you know, basically products that we're going to need to be able to do um, cutting fabric for applique. Then we have the rhinestone starter kit, and this one includes just a you know small gross of stones and nice little pick tool and the all important kind of painter's brush that we use to and some of the, all of the different materials that we use to do rhinestone designs. Um, we'll do the heat transfer vinyl starter kit, and I love the little. Um, this little artistic hook tool that you can use to kind of get things off the cutting mat and anyway all the cleaning tools and products um, one of the things I will say is if there are any uh, new products that come along from Genomi that I haven't picked up yet I'll certainly try and get them because that was my intention was to um, to make this kind of really match the edge and the edge products line and the whole artistic product line uh, so we'll be learning about the techniques you'll, what you'll find is that all of these starter kits really kind of complement the different techniques in the in the software so let's pull up the software I'm gonna click on start and click on my creative drawing software and then it'll open up the maybe it's already open yeah okay it was already open um, open up the software and we're just gonna do a little bit of a quick start learning guide today um, sorry I'm looking at my questions box people are going on about how awesome Maddie Bushman is and I can't tell you how much I agree she's um, tremendous personality and super fun educator to to learn from will these products work with the cameo now that is a very good question I've been able to use most of the products that I bought for my cameo with my artistic edge for example I have a nice set of pens that I bought for the cameo they all worked with the edge I haven't tried that yet but they have a very similar um, holder you know in terms of the tools that's a really good question Shelly I don't know I'll come back to you on that in next class and write that down 
right now. Sorry, guys, I've got to write this down. Yeah, that'll just be a little reminder for me to follow up on that, Shelly. I don't know. But those are the tools. And at very least, okay, we're going to be learning about the techniques. So looking at the software, and if this is your first look at the software and you're brand new, then um, a quick orientation of what you're looking at would be in order. Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit with my scroll wheel and mouse. So I'm just scrolling the wheel on my mouse. Here you can see I have a cutting mat on my screen. Um, you have the ability to choose the cutting mat that's on your screen. So right here, select cutting mat. And it's set right now on the 12 by 12 edge cutting mat. <clears throat> I'll go with the 15 by 15. If you don't have an edge um, and you're using a silhouette, then you would probably just choose the 12 by 12. It's just a cutting mat. It's, it doesn't matter. Uh, but per se, so I have the 15, so I'm going to say 15 by 15. I also have this beautiful 15 by 30, which will be awesome for making really big things all at one time. Um, so my mat got a little bigger, and that's what I'm working with. So you can see how it kind of relates to the space. Now, when and if you make any embroidery, which, of course, we'll also be doing, we're going to be learning about all of the techniques in the software, um, we also can choose and select and include an embroidery hoop on our screen. And so you could say, well, I have, you know, and oh, so that's creating a new hoop. I don't have any embroidery in my uh, design at the moment, so... If I want to, I could just select a, any hoop from any machine that Janome makes, uh, as well as other brands. So we've got, you know, everything from Husqvarna and Viking to Brother on the list. And then, uh, so if you have, for example, the MC15000, you might want to select your nice big 230 by 300 GR hoop and say, okay. So you can see the, you know, almost relative to the size of the big 15 by 15 cutting mat, the size of that big embroidery hoop. Anyhow, and you can decide to display or not display those things at any time. Uh, there's drop-down menus, which will have a lot of the functions of the software will be found in the drop-down menus. Uh, but certainly there's tools on toolbars for most of it. And here at the top, this is more or less starting with your standard Windows things like new and open and save and print and cut, copy and paste and the all important undo button and redo. Now we have some selections, select techniques. This is going to be a lot of what we're going to be learning about. I'll just click on that and open up the window. So there's, this was new with version 7.1, select techniques. And so we generally had a lot of this already, but selecting techniques is going to interact with our object properties. If everything's got a green light on it, I've selected all the techniques. If I deselect a, um, a technique, then what happens is when I look at the objects of the design, and we're gonna talk about how it works in objects of designs, in the object properties box, it will not have, it won't show those techniques. So it basically kind of helps you focus in. If you're just doing cutting, then you can say, okay. And if I draw a shape right now, and just to quickly get something, I'll just quickly draw a star shape. Um, the only object properties I really have are the ones that relate to doing cut, the cut technique. If I click back on here and turn on some embroidery technique or some stencil technique and say, okay, now I've got some embroidery tools and the stencil tool. Okay, and if I want to turn on all the techniques, then I'll have all the tools or all of the options in terms of styles of crafting that we can do. This is the fabric selection. And so if we create embroidery, then selecting the fabric from a list of you know, many different sort of general styles. So embroidery smooth or light or normal or heavy. And then, you know, in embroidery normal, are you sewing on fleece? Are you sewing on denim? Are you sewing on cotton? And what you select, and then of course the display color, um, will affect the stitching that gets created. The software understands when you sew on cotton and you make a satin serial outline on a star um, and you make it be two millimeters wide and then you st stitch it out, 
the style of understitching and density that should be selected are based upon the fabric setting. So that's why we have a fabric setting and that's where you choose it from up here. So now that we have our edit palette, you know, and this is where you could um, control the palettes and the threads and the colors in your design and interact with them. And this is based on RGB, but you can choose from a large list of brands of thread, you know, to choose from. So if your, um, you know, favorite thread isn't in this list, then I guess I'm not sure what we do about that. But most, otherwise, I think you just work with generic color lists like RGB, which are just computer generated colors. But most of these have, what it'll do is it'll assign the thread number. So when you do printed things, if you've got Janome thread, you can click on Janome. And then notice that the thread numbers will then relate to the actual Janome. See if I mouse over top of this. Now looking, so I've been talking about the top at the moment and kind of going through this toolbar, but notice down at the bottom, I have my palettes. Okay, so on the right, we have our object properties. On the left, we have our sort of create something tools. Up at the top, in the sort of secondary menu, I have tool options. So these are the options that relate to the tool and the object that I have selected. And it's what I call object-based software. You know, I made a shape. And that shape can be manipulated in any number of ways. We could cut this shape, we could applique this shape, we could make a satin serial, we could do paint technique, we could do stencil technique, we could do cut technique. It's almost unlimited. We could add crystals to the shape. Each shape that you make has two options, a fill and an outline. So notice in object properties, you have a fill and you have an outline. The fill options are shown when you click on fill. The outline options are shown when you click on outline. And as you can see, I chose an embroidery satin serial outline for our star. And here down at the bottom, when you look at the palette, you'll see threads and brushes. Now, if I don't have any embroidery in my project, if we had no embroidery technique turned on, you wouldn't have any threads. You would just have brushes. And yeah, you know, so brushes relate to doing embroidery or sort of not embroidery, but paint. Depends on the technique you're using. Threads here, brushes here. And there's the color palettes. Now, notice I'm going to click on the star. So this here is the selection tool on the, on the left-hand toolbar. When I click on the selection tool, I can select this star and I can see down at the bottom that it's got a black outline. There's no fill in it. If I look on the paint, it's just set as artwork right now. It doesn't have any technique in, assigned to it. If you did net fill, it shows me that it's got now in the threads, black outline and pink fill. What if you didn't want to use pink fill? What if you wanted blue fill or gold fill? Well, here's my palette and I could click. Now notice every color in the palette has a, a left, upper left and a bottom right. And the bottom right is solid representing the fill and the upper left is open representing the outline. And so if I, when I have this shape selected with my selection tool, I can decide its outline by clicking on any color in the upper left. And I can design or assign its fill color by clicking on any color in the bottom right. And so if I go and choose this gold in the bottom right, right now, I'll click on it, it's changed the color of the fill of this shape to be a net fill. So we zoom in, what is net fill? It's embroidery run stitches that go back and forth to create a criss, you know, a cross pattern. Can I control that? Well, in the object properties for net fill, these are the um, things I can adjust the size of it, the offset, so how far is it or how close is it to the outline itself, and the angle. And I'll take the angle and change it to 
45 and hit enter so you can see what it does. Okay, so that's the concept. It's what I call object-based or segment-based crafting, stitching, and you create shapes using a variety of tools, a variety of methods, and then assign them different techniques. It's going to be easy. And I just wanted to give you an orientation today. Um, one of the things I want to point out, we're just going to pop back over to the internet for a minute, was on the Artistic Creative Products website, you'll find some very important information. First of all, what version do you have? If you've had your stuff for a while, you may not even have version 7.1. You know, if your artistic software doesn't have the techniques selection window, which by the way, now that I have this open, notice that the red <clears throat> light on this one, that says this technique is currently in use in this project and therefore you can't turn me off. You can turn off cut and crystals, but you can't turn off embroidery. You can turn these back on and off, but you can't this one because it employs embroidery. Now, if I say, okay, if I select it <clears throat> and change the net fill to be a paint fill and change the outline to be a paint outline, notice now I have no, no colors in my threads palette and I have black and gold are now in my brushes palette. And if I go to the techniques window, paints red, embroidery could now be turned off. So that's kind of how it all flows together. And so, yeah, one of the things I was talking about with the website was the version. If you don't have version 7.1, then you can update it. You know, so this is where you go and click on that to update it. Um, another thing that's nice on this website is, and I'll just click on that update. It should take me to the software section. And like I said before, there are different versions. And... <clears throat> This class is specific to Simple Cut. If you have Artistic Suite, you can still enjoy this class. You have all those tools. If you all, if you have Artistic Simple Cut, in my other classes for Artistic Workshop, where I use the suite, you could enjoy them, but only part of them. You could enjoy all the designs. I'll even show you. I can open up designs that were created using techniques that we don't have, like embroidery fill but I can't edit them or I can't really modify them per se in our simple cut. So you'll see a little bit how the different versions of the software can interact. They're very, it's all the same software. It's just which tools do you have available in the whole. And there's actually four programs in the line. There's, we should show us here. Yeah. Monogram, simple cut, sweet and premium. And I've done training for all of them and Janome has it. So one of the things Janome has been, um, a great partner and so I guess where do we find the link when we come to this next page for the software okay and then here we can learn I'll show you in a minute uh, how to find some of the other training that's available free designs free lessons these are things that you might want to check out um, when you go to free designs, you'll find that there are many different embroidery designs and patterns available. And when you select on them, they show you kind of which. So this one was a related, this one was made using Artistic Suite. You could download the file here. It's a zip file. See, it shows me April's hour, April showers zip. Some of them aren't zipped up and they're just the straight up draw file. Uh, which one did I notice was like that? I have to admit, I haven't downloaded all of these. Some of them are zipped, some of them are not zipped, some of them are just a draw file. And we'll talk a little bit in a moment about formats as well. So these are some of the things I wanted to highlight. Free designs, they also have their lessons. And so there's many different, you know, great embroidery lessons here, or crafting lessons. So this one says it's good for the rhinestone starter kit, good for artistic suite or artistic simple cut. And it has um, the embroidery and a PDF. And it looks so, so it actually looks like it's just a PDF. There's no embroidery file to download on this one. So it's a, a lesson. Maybe there's a free design over here that coordinates with it. I'm not sure. I haven't studied them that well. But um, outside of that, and looking to this website, I noticed um, Janome also has, and there's a link to it here on the Artistic Edge page. 
here they have some links. So click here for more information. Click here for instructions on the USA Artistic USA's YouTube channel. And those are both helpful. So let's look at both. So this link here takes us to the Artistic Edge page. And on so this is actually the website is called genomispecials.com forward slash edge. And this page here has um, several links and things that are important. It also has a link to the YouTube stuff. It'll tell you more about the cutter and different, I guess, examples of using it. And here they also have a link to the Edge videos on YouTube or on iTunes. So if you haven't checked out these videos yet, this would be a good time to do it before my classes. Yes, absolutely. Because the more you understand, the more you'll be able to understand what I'm teaching when we go you know, more project based. So notice edge videos on YouTube. It's going to take me to YouTube. It's going to start a video. I'm just going to pause that. Um, this is a nice, you know, introductory video. But once you're on their Artistic USA YouTube channel, notice that they have, uh, let's see, let's click right on Artistic USA to see their channel and not just this video. And I'll have to pause again. Um, now that we're on their channel, I can see that they have playlists. And if I click on the playlists, I can see that they have Artistic Suite 7.1 videos, 73 videos. Artistic Simple Cut 7.1, 68 videos. Edge, 16 videos. Simple Cut version 6, 26 videos. So these are for you know people that are using version 6 and haven't downloaded the free update to version 7.1, which you definitely want to do. Um, these are the ones I wanted you to look at. So it's a whole list and basically, and I know it because I created most of these videos and think I think I created all of them. This list is all, you know, one, two and three minute long videos that are very specific. And I tried to go through, if you watch them in order, I don't know if they come up numbered, but I had numbered them originally. Um, but if you watch them all, you will see, I talk about each tool kind of in a short, quick little video. So they're very helpful reminders and review. So check that out. Um, going back on that Genomi Specials page, so let's close this. This page here, um, I noticed some of these ones are also downloadable. So if you go on to this patriotic one, so these are the projects, right? And when you look at them, some of them, if you click right on the images, it'll download that pattern. So that's kind of cool. So more, um, examples of using the software, but more importantly, here on the home page of this um, genomispecials.com website was an option to download the manual and an, also a quick start guide. And these ones, I think you definitely want to go through. The user's guide, the manual, this was very important. There are things in here, so you'll want to give, it's not very many pages, I'll scroll through. I'm going to just check if anybody has any questions, I'll try to answer them a little bit, but um, you may need to, you know, if, if you run into technical troubles, I won't profess to be an expert. I haven't had any technical troubles to sort out myself, to be honest. Everything installed, no problem. Work for me, just like they said in the instructions. If you run into troubles, you may have to go directly to, you know, Genomi support for help. Um, in here, what I thought was worth mentioning was a couple of things, and one of them was the Wi-Fi, okay? And so it does a really nice job of describing the tools and the setup of the machine and how to use, you know, the different pens and attachments. Uh, but here, where it gets to the next section, I guess, sorry, I'm just scrolling past all that, the wireless setup guide. Make sure that if you're going to use the Wi-Fi, you follow through this. It was kind of a two-step thing. You see, first, I had to connect my computer's Wi-Fi here. I'm, I'm set on the, you know, sunset. And trust me, I can't disconnect from this right now because we need it to be able to talk. Um, I had to change it to be the edge. So my edge isn't currently turned on, so it doesn't show up on the list. But when I went through this little manual... It explained how to do this. I connected to the wife to the edge, 
and I used it to cut something. Even just a preview, a cut test was enough. I had to connect to it first. Then after I had connected to it, um, I would have to reconnect back to my home Wi-Fi. But once I'd done that, I could then go back and use it. Um, and the second time, I could click on the cutters and I could have it learn to add the cutter to the home Wi-Fi. And so you'll need to know your home. To do that, you have to know your home Wi-Fi password or whatever home you're in. Uh, and then you, and basically your cutter gets added to your home Wi-Fi. And at that point, um, you don't have to disconnect from the internet to be able to use it. Does that make sense? So it was a two-step process. And if you have any troubles with that, um, I'll try and help you. Otherwise, we'll have to ask General me if, if it gets technical again. But like I said, it went pretty smooth for me. The main thing was to know how to find this information and make sure you did it. Um, the only other thing I was going to say about doing the using the cutter so now it moves on to be a software user guide which this is also a nice way to learn about the software but i'm going to focus in on the software again here and i'm just coming back to it but so i won't bother to scroll through their user guide but you can and you should um the one other thing i was going to say was when you're doing stuff like cutting with your laser and using the lasers if you want to be accurate and it mentions in here to and where did it mention i'll show you where when we get back onto the screen how to calibrate that okay you need to calibrate your laser light cutting mat talks about the blades i couldn't i didn't bookmark cleaning the cutting mat here it's on this page here Laser alignment is not working properly. So if you try and do printing cut and you don't find that your printer's cutting exactly where it needs to be, you can calibrate it. And I'll just mention that because there is a little simple test that we can run through that says calibrate. What it does, it just cuts us across and then it asks you, so step one is cut across and then step two is align the laser to, to the center of the cut that it made and then when you press OK, it registers that as your, and you just have to do it once. But you need to make sure you calibrate your laser. And then your machine's all set up and ready to go, and you'll be ready for my class. And so outside of that, um, I think those are the main things I wanted to highlight there. Um, so yeah, the in the previous classes, so my artistic workshop, these classes, I were, you know, maybe half of them included crystal technique and stencil technique. Certainly I've used all the techniques in those classes. Uh, so here's some pit photographs just to show you the kind of examples of the things that we can do. Um, crystal technique, and these are different designs that I made with crystals. And I love working with crystals and cutting the little templates and you can incorporate them with stitches. So this one, you know, you can see how it's got embroidery outlines. We can make this with artistic simple cut. It takes like just a few minutes to do a little simple pattern like that. Um, this is an example of a design that has embroidery fills. Well, we don't have, we could do an applique for this thread where I, where I did a fill. Well, with simple cut, you, you know, sometimes things like this, um, we don't have that. And it, maybe you'll eventually decide you like the software and want to move up to artistic suite. Or maybe you've got other embroidery software that can create those things. Um, but the point is, these are examples of techniques that we will be doing, not the exact designs. These ones, these are ones I've already done in my previous classes, which you're welcome to check out. Um, like I said, only part part of these classes is available with Artistic Simple Cut. A lot of them was about creating embroidery, which we won't be focused so much on this time. I loved these uh, spirograph designs, and you'd be amazed how easy they are to make. Um, yeah, embroidery with netting. So you saw the netting technique, um, embroidery run lines, just creating your own patterns like this with run lines. And then look how I can take that exact same artwork and change it, you know, to be a different technique like paint. And it completely, now I'm using colored pens to draw a wedding invitation versus colored threads to stitch one. You know, how neat is that? Um, yeah, so we'll learn about the paint technique, creating drawings with the cutting machine, the cut technique. Um, I've got lots of great projects that we're going to be doing you for, you know, everything from creating 
greeting cards uh, to doing like glass etching and all kinds of reasons why we cut and we use the cut technique, including print and cut, which is super fun. Um, this was for my wish list because I've just, you know, really wish that I could have the MC 15,000 and, um, and my friends at Genome Canada saw my little wish list and said that they'd be more than happy to help me learn about the MC Fit. So they're going to lend one to me to play with and use the new AccuSetter. Yeah, so examples of doing print and cut um, and the stencil technique and how cool you can. This was my daughter took her photo with her iPhone and, and cut it out with the stencil technique and then used it to make, um, you know, art or even just simple lettering stencils. And so we'll learn about all these things in this class. Um, so hope you're excited about the class as much as I am. And I just want to kind of work through the rest of these notes that I've made for today on these basic, um, you know, how it works. Okay, is, let's just call it that. Before I return to how it works, let me just give a check in with the questions box in case it's been a while since I looked. Are all the fabrics available in Simple Cut that are available in Sweet? You know, I'm glad you asked me that, Sheila. And I, this is actually on my questions list to answer uh, because my when I installed my software, I, of course, have all the versions of the artistic software, Sweet, Premium, and Simple Cut, and Monogram. And I have different dongles. Most people that are taking this class may have used the artistic simple cut that has no dongle install that comes in the box. And I need to check if they're what the differences are, just so that I'm aware and can make you guys aware. Maybe I need to just even I may even just uninstall my suite um, or see if there's a way that I can install the standalone simple cut version beside it. So that I'm clear on what I'm not the things I'm not clear on, Sheila, are what designs are included, what artwork is included, and I never thought about it. But if there's any differences in things like fabrics, and I, I'm very fortunate to have some friends at Draw Stitch in Greece, who of course make our wonderful software, and so I'm going to write to Costas. I'm making another out right now. Sorry, I'll I'll write to Costas and just clarify that. I'll have to answer that back, Sheila. Because you if so, I'm guessing if you guys look at if you're using the version that is um no dongle that comes, you know, in the box with the edge, if there is something different that you see, let me know. Because I don't I'm I'm just not currently running that version. I have a dongle that makes my version be simple cut. I can literally unplug that dongle put in a different dongle and start the software and have a few more tools show up. And at some point in our classes, I'll do that for you guys so that you can have a sneak peek of, you know, what, what's, what are the upgrades, Trevor, but not today. So I'm going to put my questions box away and just kind of focus in on what else I want to show you guys about. So, so far I'm just looking at my notes, um, segment based or object based, right? So I made a star. And we talked about techniques, different fabrics, different color palettes. So we've done well already with my notes. But the select and transform tool, I don't think I've done well enough with this. And then the next level of it is the edit shape nodes tool. So these two tools are our main selecting and editing tools. Okay, here we've got a zoom tool. Here we've got a ruler. This is called slow redraw. That'll allow us to see how a design might stitch out. Um, this is our draw something tool, create something tool, very important tool. We'll talk about that again today. The create shape tool that I use to make the star and other basic shapes like circles and rectangles. Um, of course, the all important text tool because we do a lot of personalizing and text. And then we have some array tools, circular and rectangular array. Um, auto bordering tools, so creating borders automatically, and then the ability to take control of your sequence, a sequence, auto sequence control tool. These are the tools that we'll need to really fully understand, and the better you understand all these tools and how to relate, you know, interact with them, the more easy everything will become. And my kind of objective with this class is to make you comfortable, not only just comfortable, but love the software to the point where 
any ideas and projects that you want to endeavor on your own are going to be easy to do because you've gained the valuable knowledge of how it works. Does that make sense? Along the way, I've got a list of projects that we're going to make. In each class, there will be uh, several projects. So not just one project per class, but we'll be going forward with project-based learning. But in addition to project-based learning, tips and tricks and software-based learning. So we need to learn the tools and the settings and how to interact with these things to be able to you know, interact with and affect the end result of our projects. So all that said, you're welcome to give me some feedback in the next, before my next class with what I'd really like to know is, what do you like to make with your edge cutter? And what do you hope to learn from this class? Feel free to send me an email with that because I'll keep some notes and make sure that um, at some point in our series, we try and include as many techniques and projects as possible. All right, so on with the show. Select rectangular selection tool. Click to select on something. If I have multiple things and why don't I just make a couple more shapes, I'm just going to right or left click and drag to make the circle, right click to finish and let go. Click on the tool again, left click and drag to make a new circle or oval, right click to finish and let go. Click on hold on the tool to see the tool options. So anytime there's a little triangle on the bottom right of a tool, it means there's tool options. Select the rectangle tool, left click and drag to make a rectangle. Let go, right click to finish. Now, those are basic shapes. Coming back to the selection tool, click on one of them to select it and you see that it's surrounded by a box, see? If I click and drag, I can select by making a rectangle and whatever's in it, notice how they kind of get highlighted when, I, when they get surrounded by my rectangle. Whatever is surrounded by my rectangle will become selected. Now my rectangle is around the overall of what I selected here. That's called the transformation box. You can use it to do many things, including move the location of your objects or resize them or stretch them. And so there's different handles. So let's just click on one shape and zoom in on it. So first of all, when I'm using this rectangular selection tool, when I mouse over something, it highlights. I can see what I'm most over. When I mouse over the edge, and notice how my mouse becomes, what kind of looks like four. Here's my mouse, and there's the little four triangles. That means move. You're ready to move it. Click and drag to relocate it. Okay, moving a little further. This is not going to, This now if I click and drag, I can move again. But I have to click and drag to get that, mo those little handles that come up. If I mouse over top of the side window, I get a two triangle sort of left and right. And I can stretch it. The corners, when I go right on the corner, I get two arrows that will keep it in proportion so bigger or smaller but in proportion side ones will stretch change the proportion notice the little numbers it says 65 millimeters tall right here 28 millimeters wide and i can adjust that i can make that you know when i change the size it tells me what the new size is now you know it's nice like that um you can change the, under your tools menu, if you want to change the unit of measurement, go on to your options. Measurement system set on metric. If you'd rather work in inches, you can change it to be in inches. See, now it's 2.1 by 1.1. Okay. So you can have whatever unit of measurement you want. 
So corner handles for proportion. Now notice when I go a little bit away from the corner handle, my mouse turns into a rotation symbol, a little closer to the corner. It's the sort of bi-directional triangles. A little further away, it becomes that. Now is when I could rotate. And the center point, I can move. This is the rotation point. So if I put that, let's say here, and then rotate on this corner, it rotates. Well, that's not rotate here. Move the rotation point and then rotate around the rotation point. And as soon as you do complete that transformation, it kind of resets. The, the rotation point resets to the center each time. So if you want to move it again, you have to click and drag to move your rotation point, and then immediately go and rotate around that point. So that's called transformation. The, um, the handles in the middle that normally do stretching if you get a little further away, also do skewing or slanting. So let me just draw a rectangle. Right click to finish drawing it. So if I grab the center handle, I can stretch it. If I get a little further away from it, it turns into the slant or whatever you call that. Skew or, I don't know, push it over, lean it. This is all called transforming, and you can transform any shape that you make with this kind of um, an ability. The op, I guess the additional editing tool is the edit nodes tool, edit shape nodes tool. And if I click on that, notice now that I have little green handles, which become my ability to, and they, they each handle will have a different purpose. So I'm going to start a new kind of square here shape zoom in on it right click and zoom in on it so there it is in selection mode you can see all the selection handles when I change to edit shape nodes the handles become these green ones now the one in the left hand corner will allow me to round the corners the one in the right hand corner will allow me to change its proportions the one in the center will allow me to change its location. Edit notes. If I select the star that we made earlier and go to edit nodes, one handle is for position, one handle is for rotation, and one handle is for the pointiness of the rays. So when this is very specific to these shape tools when you use the shape tools these things will change these edit shape nodes will change based on what shape you drew the other thing that will change based on what shape you drew is the tool options and notice i'm just going to click off click on this rectangle the tool options here are relating to this i can set this is how far is it away from the center. There's your center, zero, zero. It's 5.3 inches, oh, millimeters, away from the um, center, but only point, you know, 0.8 from here. That says millimeters, but it's it reads like inches to me. That is not five millimeters away. It's five inches away. We change it. It's confused. I'm not quite sure why that is, but it is. But that is definitely 0.8 of an inch away from the center line here. Does that make sense? And if I change its location, those numbers are going to change. See that? Those numbers change. That's This is how you can mathematically set things. Do you want it to be a specific height? It's 0.4 of an inch. If you want it to be two inches tall, type two. It'll make it specifically too tall. If you want to make it specifically a certain width, you can make it, you know, two inches by four inches, and it'll be specifically two inches by four. You can keep it proportional. You can scale it X and Y. So if you want to do it percentage instead of absolute sizes, you could make a duplicate of this shape, mirror it on X or Y coordinates, rotate it, change its outline size. So if I said this outline was going to have a satin serial run or satin serial embroidery outline, I could use this to set how wide that would be. 0.1 is a very, very small amount. If I make it two millimeters, it'll make, oh, that's two inches. 
saying millimeters, but it really means inches, remember? So if I make it 0.2 of an inch, that's a half decent border. <laughs> See that difference? Um, the point is this is how you, all of these things interact together, the tool options. So tool options also interact with the tools you select. In other words, let's just turn off nothing selected. I've zoomed out. I'm going to grab on the star tool and notice that my tool options say, how many rays do you want? What start angle do you want? And what ray size do you want mathematically? If I said, I want a five-pointed star, I could click and drag and I would get a five-pointed star. If you change, so there's my five-pointed star. If I right-click and stop making it, because I could keep making five-pointed stars here, but when I right-click and finish making it, then it becomes selected. And now, yes, I can still change the number of rays from five to six. And it updates it. And I can change its ray size and its start angle. So when you're drawing them, you can set them, but you can also change to so the ray size is set at 60. So if I make that 80 and say tab or enter, it updates it. It's the same numbers and same transformations if I go to the reshape tool and get the little green handles and make the ray size smaller or the rotation. You know, come back on tool options and they've been adjusted. You want to adjust the number of rays to four? Type it in there and adjust it. So this is tool options and the tool options, and you'll notice that they change, like I said, depending on you don't have things like the number of rays with the rectangle, but you do have the roundness, remember, for the corners. So the roundness is set at 80. If I make it less, I'll make it 90. Oops. Or make it 100. Make it zero. Make sense? Okay, um, so just looking select mode versus shape mode. And we've talked a little bit about line versus fill and the palettes and how we interact with them. So notice everything that I make, every rectangle, every circle, every you know rectangle, star, whatever that I make comes in with what looks to be a pink fill and a black outline. And the pink fill is set as a paint fill and the outline is set as a run stitch. So those are what you're going to call the default settings. Whatever you make comes in as the defaults. Then you can click on and say, no, I didn't want a run stitch outline. I wanted a satin stitch outline, and it updates it. And you could say, and for fill, I didn't want a paint fill. I wanted an applique fill, and it updates it. And now I have pink and black as my threads. The color, if I wanted it to be a blue applique, I come down here and click on the lower right of the blue, and it gives me blue applique. If I wanted the outline to be red, or brown or whatever this color is, I click on the upper right and I now I have a kind of a dark green, turquoisey kind of color applique with a red border. The palette's much larger than what you can see and so you can use these little arrows to scroll through and find just the color that you want. And of course I showed you with the tool up here, you can choose whatever you know palette of colors that you want to work with in terms of brands. But in terms of the default, so what makes automatically, when I you can when you on a color, if I right click over top of it, and notice when I go right over it, when I'm on the bottom, I got a paint bucket on my cursor. If I move over the top left, I get a pencil. So you know which side you're on based on the pencil and the paint bucket. If I right click on this, I can choose to select by. So if I, let's just zoom out. If I right click over top of the pink thread, the brushes, sorry, right click over that and say select by, and it's either select by fill color or pen color. And I know that there's a bunch of 
pink fill parts here. So I'm going to click on select by fill color. And everything that happens to have that pink fill color has been selected. See that? If I come over here, so I'll click off to let go. If I right click over top of this one and say select by fill color, it'll just select that one thing. If I come over to the black one, because almost everything has a black outline, and I right click over the black outline and say select by pen color, it'll select everything that has a black you know, outline or pen color. So the pen, maybe a run stitch, maybe a satin stitch, depending on what we selected. There is one with a black, because I think the very first one I made, I did with the orange paint and black outline. So if I right click here and say select by pen color, it's just that one. So that's, and, and then, so going, coming back to the defaults, I can come to any color in my color palette, and if I always like to work in blue, right click on it and say set fill color for this design only or for all new designs. So, okay, oh, just for this design, I'm going to make blue fills instead of pink fills, just as my default. Of course, you can change them. And I'll come over and right click on the upper right of this orangey or pen, you know, brownie color and say set pen color. And so, Again, just for this design only. And then do you want it to be just for graphic objects or for text objects? So this is how you set your default. So now if I grab on my circle tool and left click and drag, right click, I automatically get a blue circle with a red outline. So that's how you can interact with, you know, the settings, I guess, for the what's the default when you're making, if you're going to make a bunch of things that are blue and you just want them to be blue right off the bat, you set your default. So, okay, we've looked at these two tools here. This is the zoom tool. Well, I do a lot of my zooming by scrolling out and then putting my mouse over what I want to zoom into and then scrolling in. Scroll out over here, put my mouse over here, scroll in. Um, that's only one way. Um, you can scroll you know, zoom in many different ways. And one of them is to use the zoom tool. And if I click and drag, I've got zoom in, I've got zoom out, I've got zoom all, and I have a panning tool. So if I choose the zoom tool, I can actually click and drag to choose where to zoom to. Click on the zoom tool, click and drag, and it'll zoom to whatever I, you know, click and drag to. Um, zoom out. And show all will zoom to everything on your screen the next tool is called the measure tool and you're going to use that to basically click and drag to measure the distance so since we're working in inch inches i got a nine inch ruler if i say well i wonder how big this little circle is and i can't tell i can click and drag now excuse me you may notice that i also have a ruler and a grid in my workspace these are all things that you may or may not have showing under your view drop down menu, you can choose kind of what things you're looking at. Rulers, or it's an on off. You know, there, there goes the ruler. View, rulers, check it, and now it's on again. Um, grid, this is the little kind of dots that you see. I can clean those up. The guidelines, the, the center of my embroidery space, the, these guidelines, I can choose to view them on and off. Not only that, let's turn the guidelines back on. I can add them. See when I'm on my ruler, if I click and drag, I can pull down on a new guideline. And so when guidelines are turned on, things will automatically snap to it. So if you want to put all your things along this line, see it just nicely snap. I need this one to sit on the line too. So I'll click and drag that and it snaps to fit on there. Click on my rectangle, snap that on there. So things snap to guidelines. If you're finding guidelines annoying, turn them off and they won't have anything snap to. <laughs> hoop, on and off. So if you don't want to see the hoop, you can turn the hoop on and off. View, cutting mat. 3D viewing. So if I don't have 3D view on, my stitches will look more like this, and my, cut, my paint lines and my drawing lines will look like computer lines. When I turn on the 3D view, it makes them look more realistic. You can also do uh, realistic paint, which will make your drawings seem more realistic to you know when you know to what they're going to look like when you draw them. Yeah, so that's your view drop-down menu. 
backdrop. And once we start working with backdrops, you'll you'll find that this will become very helpful to hide your backdrop or make it more apparent. So each object can either have a line or a fill, and you can tell down here, upper left for line, bottom right for fill. Each line or fill can have the properties, the techniques that you select in this box over here. In general, that's kind of how it works. Really, that's what we need to understand. Um, this little tray here, okay. So this is a sequence tray. It's going to reflect this order that I made the things in each time I created something new, it put it in a new tray. It's possible to have things in the same tray. Sometimes when we do automatic embroidery or automatic crafting where we allow the software to auto trace, everything will be all in one tray. And this tool here is one of the ways that you can interact with that. You know, we can run this and it'll break apart a design or put them back together again, you know, and reduce the number of trays or, or, um, break them apart as needed. And so it kind of relates to the sewing sequence. You see, if the last tray in my list is this one here and I want to change it, I can move the order by just changing the sort of number of its tray. And so we'll learn more about the sequence tray and I can make it bigger. It's also a nice way to help you selecting things. So if you're like, what is this piece? When I hover over its tray, it centers to it. And I don't know how well you can see these little options here. Um, but for example, this one will group them by colors. This one will, it's right now they're showing in there. So this little circle in relation to the whole design is small and it's off to the left. See that? If I mouse off, it goes away. If I mouse over it, it finds it for me. And it shows me that in the tray is the, is the design and it's this little piece over there. If I change this, this little icon, it'll make every object kind of fill up the shape of the tray. So they're easier to see what they are. Anyway, these are views, view options of your sequence. And you can zip it up and make it small. If it's in your way, you don't want it to be kind of in the way of the workspace. You can zip it with a little triangle and unzip it to expand it or collapse it, I guess, would be the correct terms. So we'll learn more about the sequence and how to use this to interact with the sewing sequence or the cutting sequence or the paint sequence of your designs. Of course, there's other ways. There's often several ways. So for example, if I select on a shape, I can right click to get an, a sort of secondary menu, which may have the ability to change its order. So I could move this forward one order or backwards one or make it be the front or the back. So if I change it to be the back, now I look at the tray, look, it's tray number one, because I put it to the back. If I want this one to be last, I right click on it and go on order and then say, well, it is obviously the front because it doesn't allow me to change it to front. So let's change this one to the order and to back. Why not to front? That's kind of funny, huh? Order, there we go, to front. Must have been because something else was selected. To front of design will bring that to be the last thing that gets created or gets stitched or painted or cut or whatever. So this is the sequence. Things will cut or stitch in the sequence that you create them or, or the sequence that you manipulate by using a sequence tray. So the one thing that we haven't talked about and, and just maybe a couple more things that I want to kind of review in this in this quick start class, and that is slow redraw, the drawing tools, maybe an introduction to lettering. So the slow redraw, and remember I talked earlier about the fabrics. And let's, you know what, to make this easier, let's do this. Let's I've got so much on my screen. Let's just select it all and delete it and grab ourselves a little oval tool and make an oval. And let's say that our oval has a satin stitch sent outline on the outline tab, satin serial, and let's make it be a width of two, no, that's in inches, right? So we'll be a, a 0.2 millimeter 
2.2 inch, sorry, width to our, and then for the center, for the fill, we'll do netting. Okay, so both techniques are embroidery because slow redraw is going to relate to embroidery. And when I turn it on, I can push start and it'll allow me to watch my design stitch out. I can change the speed of it, slower or faster. I can even click to advance. If I want to get to this part of the border, I just click on it and it starts you know, sewing at that area wherever I clicked. But it allows you to see how your design stitches out. You know, you can see, the, oh, it's used underlay. It had edge underlay and zigzag. Did you see that? Oh, let's come back here. See that? Edge underlay and zigzag. That was because of the fabric setting. If I close this and come back out and change the, the fabric, sorry, where's the fabric? I have it set on cotton. If I change it to fleece, a light colored fleece and then go to slow redraw presumably I'll have different when well, I still have an edge run with a zigzag let's see if I change it to something lighter than like chiffon and go slow redraw and move it to here I got all the same well maybe that's a difference in simple cut I'll have to look into that I'll look into it more obviously there's still a reason to have the fabric settings we don't do a lot of embroidery creation in here to be honest those are nice settings it's it's based on the width of it so if this was only a one you know a smaller satin border oh that's big a small satin stitch border and we did slow redraw I would expect it to have a different yeah so now you can see that based on the size of it it knew that because I made a small satin border it just needed a single run I'm not sure why changing the fabric didn't affect it but I'll have to I'll add that to my list of things to ask Costas about what um, if that may be something that isn't accurate because I'm using the, my version was, is perhaps different. Just need to clarify that. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so anyhow, that is the slow redraw tool and it is helpful when you're doing embroidery just to be able to understand how it's going to stitch out. Now, this tool here is obviously a very important tool because this is, unless you're making circles or squares or stars this is the tool it's all about and there's four options so you've got the freehand option the bezier option the outline option and the magic wand tool and there are four different ways to create shapes i'll just quickly show you all of them freehand shapes if i click and drag i draw a line when i right click i'm done drawing it notice there was a smoothness level up here so if i start a new line and make the smoothness level one instead of 10, it'll follow my line more strictly. If I make the smoothness level 10 and draw my next line, it smooths that out. Anyway, I want you to imagine that you've got, a, I mean, I'm just drawing freehand with my mouse to draw these, but if you had a, a pen tablet, uh, like or a Wacom tablet or um, a touch-based Windows computer where you could draw right on the screen, that could be really natural, you know, just like a pen on a piece of paper to draw your shapes, to trace. We would put some artwork on our screen and then begin to trace it. Let's go through. I would, I'm just going to open up because it's quick and easy to do this, right? If I go through the folders from my artistic, from my DVDs from Artistic Workshop and I go into, you know, a folder and say, well, what was in this class? Okay, here's something with crystals and embroidery. So how did I create it? Well, you would start by saying new. And you choose what techniques you want to employ. So when you start a new design, you can, the very first step can be to choose your techniques. If you simply say create new design, you get a new empty design. I didn't really do anything 
helpful there. But if I say new and I go through the next process, now I have the ability to, well, first of all, select what fabric, because I had embroidery checked, I have to choose a fabric. So we'll just go with cotton next. Then I want to work from an image. I also can work from embroidery, from a scanner, from a camera, or just again, start a new blanket graphic. And you can choose your cutting mat and your hoop. So these are all things that you can change after the fact. I've already shown you how to change your cutting mat and how to change your hoop. But changing the artwork, so I have to click on this little dot, dot, dot to either go from embroidery or from a, you know, and this is how you can interact with artwork from an artwork file or how you can interact with embroidery from an embroidery format. So if we want to go with artwork, and now I'm just going to go to my desktop and look for that one to six folder and go into the same class number two B and find the artwork that was what was used to make that little you know scroll with the crystals whatever and say next so now that I've selected it I say next and it asks me a key question open as a backdrop or trace or photo paint well I don't know this photo paint I'm gonna I'm not sure if photo paint comes with simple cut I better clarify that because if it does, that's great. But I wasn't aware that it did. Um, I may just be confused. I have, I'm not, I wasn't looking at the sheets recently to see what the differences were. I'll be, but I'll focus in on that. I promise you guys. Um, but the question here is why? So open as a backdrop means I'm going to draw the shapes. Trace means I want the software to draw the shapes. So we're just talking about the drawing tool for a minute. So I'm just going to get a backdrop, which means the image comes in on my screen and I have to now draw what I see, which is really gives you the most control. Now, freehand might be kind of difficult because I don't have, uh, but let's see if I just click and drag. Eh, it's kind of squiggly a little bit, but I'm getting there, you know, uh, and then, like I said, if I had a little, you know, maybe if I had the Microsoft Edge plus and it didn't do bad, but plus when it did the smoothing, I, I think I drew closer than the line. So the smoothness level was kind of my Achilles heel. But you can see the idea, you know, you draw these shapes. Even if my shape wasn't incorrect, I could change it to a satin stitch. Set its width. If, it, if I didn't feel it was wide enough, I could make it 0 0.02 or something and widen it up a little bit three or whatever i like to work in millimeters so i changing it to inches makes it harder for me to work with small outline widths like i like to say one millimeter or two millimeters or three millimeters just numbers i relate to more easily but you know inches is fine too but this is the freehand tool and the idea is you click and drag to draw the line and when you let go it's not finished I just stop drawing the line. I can keep drawing more lines until I right click, at which point that is the line I drew. So it actually connected all the parts that I drew and I'll right click again to be finished. So the key thing with drawing lines is left click and drag, right click to finish, right click to let go of the tool. If you want your lines connected, let's just zoom in on an empty space here and draw a line like this and then draw another line like this and draw another line like this and then right click they're all connected to be one line so if you don't right click you can connect things you see that if i was to do it left click and drag right click and then left click and drag right click and then right click left click and drag right click right click to let go they'd be three individual lines which if i turn off my 3d preview or look at it in slow redraw i would probably see jumps you know that might happen anyhow we don't want to get too technical about it all today the the idea is we draw lines and it's very easy to do now i made a bunch of messy looking lines let's see if i just the next tool is called the Bezier tool, and with Bezier tool, you click to make corner you click to make corner points, 
and click and drag to curve those corners. Right click to finish drying and right click to let go. So if I left click only, I get everything corners. If I click and drag, I can curve my shapes and I make little tangents. And those tangents affect before and after this point. If I right click and leave it open, it's an open shape. And open shapes can only be outlined. So, see, I can't even give this a fill. It's open. There's no fill option on an open shape. However, if I draw a shape and when I click on the, if I connect, the last point I draw to the first point that I drew, it'll automatically close the shape, right click. So any shape that's closed can have an outline and a fill. But if it's open, it can only have an outline. Can you close it? Yeah, you use the edit shape node tool and you connect the first point to the end point. In fact, you right click, close outline, and it'll close it for you. And now I can give it a fill uh, option. Whatever kind of fill in you want. Anyhow, I don't have all my t techniques turned on. So let's, one more drawing method. So this is Bezier, and the final one is outline. And perhaps outline is one of the more easy ones to use and learn with. Uh, I'll zoom back in on my artwork. With outline, if I just start here, when I click, it automatically curves every point based on where you go. It just naturally curves around. And then if you want to make a corner point, you just have to hold down the shift key. So it's just click to make curves, hold down shift to make corners. If you want to stop, you right click. And then you select your shape and decide what kind of stitch it's going to be. See that? View, backdrop, hide. View, backdrop, show. So the last drawing tool was called the magic wand tool. And it generally will create a shape by clicking on a shape and, mat and mirror it. See that, I, there's a shape here. I'll just click on it and move it. It's there. See, I've got two shapes here. I'm gonna make this one blue fill with uh, red outline. And I'm going to use magic wand tool and click on it. I got another one. Didn't match its colors, it just created one. So you take the magic wand tool, say, I need another one of these, another one of these, another one of these, and you create three new things that are all based on that shape, whatever that shape may be. In this case, they're all the same shape because I'm just duplicating. It's another way, I guess, of creating you know, copies of a shape. Anyhow, those are the, so these tools, and then we have a, a tool to create a crystal shape. Well, this is like to literally put down one crystal. You know, at a time, I want a crystal there, I want a crystal here, I want a crystal here. Right click to stop making crystals. So um, now I'm not going to try and go through every tool of the software today. We've kind of been 90 minutes into class. I've talked a lot about what you need to do to be ready to enjoy my classes and what you can do and just kind of an overview of what the classes are going to include and what my plan is. I decided I would start this way because it's a brand new class and I want to share this information more readily to make it easier for people to know what the classes are about. Uh, because in general, going forward, the classes will be a little bit more focused on tools and topics. And that's really what will be different from today, which was kind of an overview and introduction class. And that's which is why I decided I needed to add an additional date so that I have still have six full classes to focus in on projects and different techniques that we're going to learn about. So all of that said, I'm going to pop up my questions box and see what's going on.
So Sheila and I were talking about fabrics, which led to questions for me to follow up on. Is there a PDF with a picture of all the designs and clip art versus just a file name? And that was asked by Linda back, you know, 30 minutes ago. And I think it was, is this when I was on the artistic website? Because you know what? I don't think they have a PDF that shows you all of the things. I didn't, I think you, with, with specifically if that's about their website, I didn't see a catalog that you could click on that said, you know, here's all the free designs. Even when we're browsing in our software, um, you know, you have to kind of look through the folders to find things. So I don't know if that helps you at all, uh, Linda, but go ahead and type in if that didn't answer the question. Now, Virginia appliques and appliques with embroidery. Ah, so she's giving me her feedback. Now, I will say it's okay to give me your feedback within this class, but I want to be honest, generally speaking, once class is over, I don't rev review the comments made in class. So a better way to communicate those things with me, maybe I didn't say this earlier, is if you want to give me that feedback about what, I, what I'd asked for, which was, what do you like to use your edge cutter to make? And what would you like to learn? Because also I see Stevens typed in kind of even greater information. Um, please send me an email with that stuff because then I'll be able to follow up on it. Okay. Steven, I'm just going to read your comments. Stephen had some questions. You know what? You could contact me, Stephen, if you wanted to. Um, he was telling me about his simple cut version, the one that came from with the machine. And anyway, you're also not seeing brushes. Sorry, I'm just reading now. Yeah, she, running one with an activation code, not a dongle. They should be the same, but uh, I will find out more to find out if there are any differences. Because if there's a lot of differences, what I'd like to do is actually install that so that I can use specifically the, the, the included version with my classes. That way it'll be helpful for all of us. I don't want to show you guys stuff that you can't do unless I'm showing it to you with the purpose to say this is what you might want to do if you upgrade, right? Um, in the meantime... I appreciate all of the feedback and feel free to email me. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, email me the best way to get in touch with me and we can go forward with that. I'm super excited about this class. Uh, still a lot of interest, a lot of people just joining up and I expect, and remember, people can join this class at any time. If you join during the classes, I will catch you up. So if you've listened to this video and you decided that you want to go forward and join us, no problems, even if it's three months down the road or whenever, if it's even if it's after all the classes are over, once the classes have been recorded, then they'll simply become a DVD that you could purchase. Uh, if you purchase the DVD now, you get to enjoy the classes as they're made. That's the main difference. And thank you so much, everybody who attended today's class live. Um, I appreciate it. Um, Dini's asking for an agenda. I don't have a specific agenda to provide. It'll be, you'll get a little bit of a mystery with each class that comes out. Uh, I don't generally have any sort of adv advanced warning about what we're working on next. So I appreciate the questions though. And in the meantime, I want to end by saying thank you to everybody who attended today's class live or watched its recording. Certainly hope you enjoyed it. Uh, looking forward to our next class. So our next class is um, just into the new year, January the 5th. Uh, until then, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Uh, take care and bye-bye.